Hello friends. Oh boy, you guys have been waiting for this and I am too. I sometimes I underestimate how much I love green and I automatically think my favorite color is purple, but sometimes I wonder and I love blue too. I love all color. Anyways, long story short, what are you guys doing? Sit down, get a snack. We are going to talk about my favorite colored art supplies, green art supplies. That includes color pencils, watercolor, markers, ink, you name it. We're going to go over it. And so there's also a little special something else that I added in. So what I'm going to do is since I have been looking at some of the other videos from this series. Um, I think the color temperature gets thrown off whenever I hold the paper up. You know, shoot it from above, we're good to go. And I also have a color, favorite colored series for eyeshadow palettes too, because here on this channel, if this is your first time here, hello, I'm Jane and I am a fine artist. And so I do art videos and I do makeup videos, specifically eyeshadow videos. So if that sounds like a good deal for you, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, ring that little bell, make sure it's turned on and you will see every time that I upload. So let's just go ahead and get started and I'll see you in just a second. Roll the intro. <laughs> Okay. All right. Guess what? We're going to start with colored pencils. And I thought I would zoom you in so you couldn't see the rest of the page. And that might, you know, add an element of surprise. So you're not seeing all the names all at once. But first of all, check out my nail polish. Oh my gosh. This is something that whenever I first saw it, I was just blown away. This is by Cirque Colors. And that is an independent brand. And they have some really unique colors and it also is magnetic. So it comes with a, well, it doesn't come with a magnet, but if you have a magnet, one of those nail magnet things, you can like put it over your nail and then it will gather, that magnet will pull together at the place that you put the magnet over. It's very, very cool. But I like just wearing it by itself because it's just so, it's like scarab green, right? Okay, that's enough. <laughs> All right, here we go. So let's talk about colored pencils. Now I decided to try and gather um, not just like the usual, but I actually picked out a couple of them that were light fast from the light fast set. No, I haven't done a review yet, but don't worry. I will. So in the next 30 years or something, <laughs> but it's just a lot to, there's a lot going on. And also I have a lot of plans. So, and that is one, one of the video plans is to, I want to be able to to use it for a while before I give my thoughts and opinions. Um, so we have, let's start off with this. We've got Derwent Vivid Green, and this is the Light Fast pencil over here. So, you know what, I will zoom in more. Yeah, so we have Vivid Green, which we also have it in the ink tents right here. So you can see those two. That's what I like about Derwent. They have corresponding colors amongst their different sets. So Vivid Green, beautiful. It is what it is. It says it says what it is. And I really like that it's, it can be used as a grass green if you wanted it to for landscapes or whatever. But how beautiful is that? It's like this shamrock green. Right next to it, we have Holbein Chartreuse Green. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, if you look here, we've got the Derwent Color Soft Lime Green. The Chartreuse is pulling more yellow than the uh, Lime Green of Color Soft. So there's that. And then if you move on to Summer Green, this is, of course, you know, as it says, it can be used for, you know, if you're, if you're wanting to capture like a beautiful sunny day, this is going to be good for your grass. If, and um, I think to me, this is, this is a great green for eye colors, like just to give a hint of green. And um, cause usually whenever somebody's eyes are green, they're more along the lines of this tritone meadow and um, which is kind of the yellow spots and a little bit more on the green side, that's an olive green. But you could get away with adding a little bit of that. We've got the Derwent Light Fast Mallard Green. Mallard Green is by far one of my favorite Derwent colors. I love it. And so I love it on, um, we have it in, where'd it go? Where'd it go? We have it in the ink tents as well. So 
you could definitely see that it is a favorite of mine. And it's just such a beautiful green. It, and if you've ever seen a mallard, oh my gosh, it's the exact color of a mallard. It really is. So if you were thinking about creating, whoa, this creaky chair. If you're thinking about creating something that is specific to that green, it would be wonderful. But if you were actually doing, you know, a painting of a duck or illustration or whatever you want to call it, that would, you know, if that, oh, what am I trying to say? Come on, Jane. I think this would be perfect, obviously, if you were creating an illustration of a duck, but this could be used for many different shades and undertones. Like you could, you could use it as um, the underpainting for, you know, specific turquoise greenish theme. You got Malachite Green by Holbein. I love this color. It's just a lovely true green. And of course it is the color of Malachite, hence the name. We've got Derwent Color Soft Lime Green. Beautiful. It's just, it's almost a neon green. It's just so, it packs a punch. I love it. And I love the Color Soft line. But it just feels like they need a little bit more love. Tritone Meadow. We're going to get to the Tritone review, I promise. But as you can see, there, it, it looks like I've taken several different pencils and colored. So it's got, you know, a darker green. It's got kind of a Mm, like a apple green and a yellow. And so I really like that a lot. And polychromos thalo green. I think this is a little light for thalo. Am I just, am I tripping? I don't know, but it's beautiful. I love it. I am really, I love thalo green and you'll, you'll see different companies, thalo, 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 thalo greens across the favorites. So this is Holbein Tri Triton, Triton green, Triton. It's Triton. I'm sorry, guys. It's late in the day. <laughs> to me, this looks more like a phthalo. I could be like a phthalo green blue shade. And then we have Prismacolor Peacock Green. Um, that's a, a wonderful color. It's kind of a classic, you know, whenever I see old Prismacolors that I've used over and over again over the years, and then I took a hiatus from them, I come back and I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that. So we're going to move on to some liquid watercolor here in this spot. We've got the Ecoline Liquid Watercolor in Spring Green. Very, very pretty bright yellow green. We have Dr. P.H. Martin's Olive Green. It's, it's a true olive. I really like that. I love that the Dr. P.H. Martins are just pure. They're, I'm getting too technical here and I'm getting too perfectionist. Dr. P.H. Martins Chartreuse. Gorgeous. Now you can tell that, you know, the Chartreuse here is pulling more green than say the Holbein Chartreuse. But I still, Chartreuse is one of my favorite colors. I absolutely love it. It's such a unique, fun color. And then we have, let's go over here. We have some Derwent ink tints. Like I mentioned before, we have the Mallard Green. And to me that, I mean, it is it is almost a phthalo green, but it's such a great color. And then we have the Vivid Green, which I mentioned before. We have the Ink Tense Apple Green. So pretty. I mean, I used to work in a farmer's market and the Granny Smiths were pretty much like that. It reminds me, this reminds me of like um, ectoplasm. <laughs> <laughs> For those of us who were children of the 80s, if you remember Ghostbusters, yeah, you know it. That's what I think of whenever I see it. We have some Liquitex acrylic ink. We have muted green, and this is so pretty. This is part of their muted line. And I have a really old, old painting that I did, you know, an ink painting that I did back in the day. Like, I'm talking like four or five years ago when I first started my channel. And I did a drawing from the muted collection and um, it was beautiful. It was absolutely, it's just so lovely and moody. So pretty. Okay. The Liquitex acrylic ink in phthalo green is a blue shade and we can see that it turn. it's, it's definitely much more on the bluer side than it is on the yellower side of green. So I love this because I don't know, there's just something about it. I just, I don't know. I, I love, for some reason, I love phthalo colors and, um, it just speaks to me. I don't know. The Jane Davenport Limeade, it's, I almost hesitated to put this on the page because I already had like these, but this actually is, is much more, much more green. Well, I guess, you know, it's a nice, fair, even color towards like compared to the chartreuse. Okay. So 
obviously it's called limeade. It does look like a lime green. So I love that. I love that there are, this is what I do this for because there are such subtle differences and sometimes there are big differences too between these colors and these shades. And also it, it lets me get to know my inventory and in essence, like, you know, if I see something that I'm really interested in, I can go back and say, I have something that looks just like that. Not that I'm just saying, you know, to be more conservative, I'm being more conservative this year about buying art supplies. So there you go. Okay, let's take a look at watercolors. We have the Sennelier Greenish Umber, which is, I mean, it's almost gray, but there's enough green in it to pass on as green. But I love that it's this dark, shadowy, moody color. And we have the uh, Paul Rumid's Phosphorescent Emerald Green. And I don't know if it's going to catch on screen, but whenever these things are at full opacity or a deeper opacity, they show off their, um, their glitter almost. Like it's like a shimmer. And um, so it's not phosphorescent, but you, I think you probably see have seen those reviews on that set already. Let me take it out. I have a better example from the Paul Rubens swatch card. So if we take a look here. Uh, can you see it? I don't know. Like when it's really super opaque, you can kind of see this shimmer in it and it's very, very pretty. Some colors are obviously more so than others, like um, the sea blue shows more of it off. And I love, I love this color. I didn't mention this color in uh, my purple colors, my favorite purple colors. So royal purple, oh, so pretty. It's almost like a bluish black. Okay, so we have, I wasn't gonna do glitter, okay, but I had to kind of show this one off and I don't, yeah, you can see it, it's catching. So the artsy glitter in fruit green is so pretty. It's got this, it looks, you know, if you took the, the shimmer out of it, it would just look like a seafoam green, but when, it hits the light, it's got this yellow reflect and shimmer in it. So pretty. And let me let me get that face or face chart. Hello. Let me get that chart out. So we have fruit green here, but then we also have I meant to to swatch this one too, the gold green, which pulls a little bit more yellow, but how pretty is that? Like such pretty colors. And this one is cheaper than the Paul Rubens. Okay, we have Mission Viridian. I really am missing getting like getting into my Mission Gold colors, and I really want to do a review on the Mission White class, which it's called uh, Watercolors for Design. So it's not entirely gouache, but I think it leans more towards being a gouache. I'm not sure. It's like a hybrid. They call it a hybrid watercolor. So we'll have to see about that. But okay, Mission Viridian, absolutely beautiful. I love a good Viridian. And we have Daniel Smith, Undersea Green. Beautiful. I love that. And I mean, what swatch page of watercolor wouldn't be complete without Daniel Smith, of course. And we've got uh, the Mission Gold Yellow Green. That That's almost like a neon green, too. It's so vivid and bright. And the Daniel Smith Green Gold is by far one of my favorite greens. Like, this, these are, like, my favorite greens in general. But, like, this one here, man, that's in my top top five. So now only a th phthalo, phthalo green deep. So a little bit deeper than your average phthalo green. And it runs a little bit more on the blue side, but gorgeous color. I love Sennelier. Just so wonderful. Holbein green leaf. Okay. So I swatched both this and their gouache. So this is the watercolor version and We'll get to the gouache here in just a moment. I'm trying to find my paper. Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Okay, so <laughs> I'll do a comparison whenever we reveal that one. I've always loved this green because I know it looks like a lot of these other greens, but this one, I mean, it's just, it's such an even green. Like that is exactly what it is. And you can you can use it as is, like especially with the gouache. Okay, so you can use it as it is. I think it's a great green for like the end of leaves, especially like tropical leaves if you're drawing a tropical plant or something. And we have the Holbein Bamboo Green. This is one of the first Holbein watercolors that I ever bought. And so it, it does hold a special place in my heart, but what a wonderful true green, right? Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Okay, second page, we're gonna take a look at the green leaf. 
See, the one on the right is the Holbein gouache, and then the one on the left is the watercolor. It almost looks like the watercolor is pulling a little bit more to the yellow side, but that could be the transparency. I don't know, but definitely one of my favorite shades. Okay, so <laughs> this here, I forgot to write it down. It is the Sakura poster color. So the Sakura poster color, there's something about these jars that I just, I love. They're cute. <laughs> but, and, and it kind of gives me a nostalgic feeling like getting paint out of a jar reminds me of school whenever I was a kid and you had like your temper of colors and everything. But if you want me to do a review on poster color, I would absolutely, absolutely be interested in creating that. But I don't know how many of you are really interested in poster color. I mean, poster color is kind of like gouache's little sister. She's not quite as grown up and sophisticated, but she did, she gets the job done. So very, very pretty. Okay, here is the surprise. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the little swatch card that I have. These are the Van Gogh granulating series colors and I did kind of ruin the dots, but that's why I swatched them out. But look how beautiful those are. Like moody, deep, wonderful goodness. Absolutely gorgeous. Dusk yellow, This is the. these are the four colors and I know it's not all green, but it's just, I had to show them off. Dusk yellow, beautiful. And I mean, it's it's a little bit more green. It's got some green in it. And then we have the dusk green, which pulls a little bit more on the yellow, or the blue side of green, but so, so pretty. And all of these are super granulating. Dusk pink and dusk violet, so pretty. And I almost, I don't know, I haven't really like looked at Schmincke and their granulating series, but I almost want to kind of say that this is a little bit more affordable, an affordable option for those of you who kind of want to experience the granulation of a color, like a really super granulating color, but you don't want to pay an arm and a leg for it. I'm going to break out my Holbein watercolor dots here. I've got two of them here. Oh, I guess I can just show you it from this one. So when I swatch these, I have a live swatching of these. The shadow green is so gorgeous. It's a lot like, it reminds me of the Sennelier greenish umber, but I think it's more, I think it's more vivid and pigmented and a little bit more on the, it's semi-opaque, whereas the greenish umber is, is more opaque because, or more translucent because Sennelier is like that. And Holbein have quite a few colors that are a little bit more on the opaque side or at least semi-opaque, but look at that. It's so pretty. And their Viridian is so pretty too. And their sap green and their olive green. Okay, this is greenish yellow too. I love that one too. I'm going to like shut up about Holbein right now. We'll talk about markers. Okay, Art is, a, is up first. You are up first, bitch. Okay, so they have quite a few greens here, as we can see. This green right here, this hunter green, there's something very special about it. It's not, it's kind of like a, oh, shut up, come on stop. Sorry guys. So this hunter green is, there's something unique about it. I, I just, I feel like this is a wonderful shadow green, but it's not, it's not too on the, like, it's not so much that it's black. There's enough, you can make it very dark, but it's not going to look black with the other colors, unless you layered something on it that was orange or something like that, but it's such a pretty color. And of course, you know, some, I could probably pick out a few of these, but um, we're going to try and kind of keep it condensed. I just love color. That's all. Let's go to, uh, oh, hoo -hoo. oh, hoo -hoo. kind of like Ricola. Does anyone remember that? Ricola. Okay. So, Ooh, let me set aside the monitor here so you can see. Okay. We have quite a few interesting greens going on here. I think this one is awesome. Bronze green, it's got enough brown in it, but it's also green at the same time. Lovely, absolutely love that. We have, um, what was I gonna show you guys? Oh, it's right here, duh, absinthe. Now, if you've ever drank absinthe, you know how like bright green it is. And I think this is absolutely appropriately named. <laughs> and drink absinthe responsibly people. I one time did not and 
I regretted it. That was in my crazier days. We have mint green light, and that is that that kind of veers almost into the turquoise category. But ocean green is so beautiful. Like this is absolutely appropriately titled too, because I can see this being the color in the ocean amongst like the the frothy bubbles and when the tide comes in and everything. And I just love it. It's so pretty. Absolutely beautiful. But we have quite a few greens in this set. And this is the 180, what, 120, not 180. Don't they have a 180 set though? They got some, they just came out with something new. and I don't remember what it was. Okay, let's go to Ardex and zoom out a little bit. Okay, so one thing that sticks out to me right off the bat is the fact that this is like balanced on like the bluish, green side and then you have the yellowish green side and I think it's just all over like I, I can't really say that any of these are my favorites because they're all kind of my favorites because I love this set <laughs> same with the blue set of this but if I had to narrow it down I would say the yellow green and probably let's see the turquoise green of course and I like the, the the pastel tones too they really did a good job of incorporating different pastels like green bice is more of like a toned down pastel yellow and then you have the pale green light and the dim green. Dim green is, it may not, you may not be able to see any difference, but there is a difference. This one is a little bit more yellow. But forest green, I mean, come on. That's gorgeous, right? I don't know. This is, I love a good emerald green too, so. <laughs> All right, folks, I'm going to take you back to where I was talking to you and we'll wrap this video up. All right, folks, that is it. Those are my favorite green art supply colors. Did you have any of them that you really liked enough to say that could be your favorite? I would love to know in the comments below or just which ones you were more drawn to, which ones you weren't drawn to. I would love to know. This is I, that's part of the reason why I do this is to kind of open the conversation about color and why we love specific colors or we're not drawn to other colors. I don't know. Anyways, I have so many things that I want to, I, I want to say review, but I don't know. I, I, they will be, I'll give you my thoughts and opinions on, but I want to do something different other than just the, like the typical review format that I've been using these past few years. And it's okay. I mean, it, but I'm kind of bored with it. So if you have any ideas, let me know. I'm going to try and brainstorm something. But as I said in the video, I am going to get to all the colored pencils that I've been meaning to get to for about a year now. And look at this. This is something I talked about too. This is the Mission Gold White Glass. Hopefully nothing will fall out. Look how satisfying that is to look at. Look how pretty they are. Man. And I got my hands on the white and black, so I think it does... It's more on the gouache side, but it doesn't say gouache on this box. It just says watercolors for design. But what a beautiful line. I mean, and I think, I think this actually is, corresponds with the Mission Gold watercolors too. So I think the, the lineup is the same as well. I could be wrong, but, and of course I want to think, say thanks again for all the well wishes as I was in the hospital last week. If you want to know about that story, uh, I'll put a card. <laughs> and so you can check that out as to what happened to me. Don't be eating while you watch it though. Okay. All right. Thank you guys. I love you so much. And I will see you next time. Yellow is coming. Yeah. That's going to be a challenging one. Anyways, I'll talk to you later. Bye.